Hi, I'm Chris from Core Electronics, and today we're looking at the GPI from PyCom. This is the getting started guide where we've got it all plugged in and code running, and I'll show you exactly what it's doing. So on the PC here, I'm just about to run the code. What I expect is that it's going to hook up the internet using cellular data and set the real-time clock inside and start telling me the correct time. So here we go, we'll hit run. Initially, the real-time clock is unset. Setting up the LTE modem, configuring, attaching, connecting, and there we go. The real-time clock was updated from au.pool.ntp.org and every five seconds now it's telling me the time. It's in a kind of a reverse year, month, day, hour, minute, second, microsecond format and it's actually giving me the correct time. No, it's not five minutes past one in the morning. This is GMT time from London uh, because I haven't set a time zone. Alrighty, so let's have a look at the hardware that we're working with. From my iPhone 6, which is an LTE phone, I've withdrawn the SIM card drawer and just taken the SIM card from that. I'll just disconnect now from the PC and take this apart and show you what's in it. I'm just waiting for the program to stop running. All right. If I take the GPI off the expansion board, you can see my SIM card is in the drawer here. The orientation for the SIM card as it goes in is shown in the text for this tutorial, as well as many other details, including firmware updates. So we need to correctly position that using the old LTE, sorry, LED end, is it the USB end? Snap those on. We also must use the LTE antenna. The, uh, the device can be damaged without the correct antenna attached. So that has to be there. We'll plug it back in now, and we're ready to run again. All right, so using LTE data is very different to using some of the other technologies that you can use to connect your Internet of Things devices to the Internet. If you have Wi-Fi, obviously you have a broadband Internet connection, and you can do lots of things, including over-the-air software updates. You could uh, post live video or photos, whatever you can do with the capacity of the Internet of Things device you're working on. But Wi-Fi isn't available everywhere. You certainly can't go across a city using the same Wi-Fi network. Bluetooth is very limited. It's low power and only about 10 meters worth of range. If you want to use Sigfox or LoRa, those deployments are rolling out everywhere. There's coverage like crazy. However, they're very specific to how you are to use the service and mostly small messages sent uh, very occasionally. So if you wanted to do something that was a bit of a bandwidth hog or needed lots of data or needed to send data continuously, LTE is probably the best option if you're in an LTE coverage zone. So I have checked as part of this project that my iPhone is LTE compatible, that the SIM card I have lets me use the LTE network. I have checked which LTE uh, protocols my provider makes available. The two main ones at the moment are CAT M1 and NB1. And the firmware that's on the devices, you need to, with your PyCom device, decide in advance which of those two you're using and load the appropriate firmware. So while I'm on firmware, there are three different levels of firmware here. The Expansion Board 3.0 has its own firmware and should be updated first. The GPI has its own firmware as well. And there is a separate firmware, as I mentioned, for the LTE radio. So those are all linked in the documentation, as is how to set up the Atom IDE and get the PyMaker extension running. So I'll just come back to the PC again for a moment. The uh, In setting this up, I have had many problems, not because of PyCom, but because uh, these three lines here that I'm showing are very critical to how the device runs. So depending on your location and the carrier you're using, there will likely be a number of configuration lines that you have to get exactly right to make your device work. Now that I have these correct, every single time I want the internet connected, it works 100% of the time, it's fabulous. However, until I got these configuration lines correct, it never worked, 0% success. So what I want to say is, as you're about to try one of these projects, you'll run into the case where you need to configure the device correctly for your network. If you're in Australia and using Telstra, there you go, it works. However, if you're on a different carrier or in a different country, you will likely have to do some digging around to find the correct settings. 
So I'll just run to the bottom of the program here. The main part of the code is here. We create a reference to the real-time clock device that's within the GPI, and we use this get RTZ function. If we scroll up the code a little bit, the de definition of the get RTZ function says, only returns an, OTC, an RTC object that has already been synchronized. So it'll give you back a connection to the RTC device and make sure the time has been set before you get it. What happens is if it's not already synchronized, it'll call another function called set RTC. So we run back up in the code again, the function set RTC will of course get the LTE connection. To set the real time clock, it needs to be connected to the internet. So we're in this kind of pattern where we expect that the clock is working. If it's not working, we jump back and set it. If we set it, we need to jump back again and get an internet connection running so that we can set it. So things are happening just as they're needed. If I now reconnect to my device and I run the program, you can see that the real-time clock is unset. So it's connecting to the internet to set the clock. The reason it's unset is that I've just unplugged it. Now, the time is being displayed again. If I stop the program, I've just clicked the run button again to stop the program and start it again. The second time it says, initially the real-time clock is set and the real-time clock says the date and time. So this is a very basic example of connecting to the internet to set the clock, uh, but there's nothing to stop you downloading a web page posting uh, to, to Twitter, uh, pushing data up and down from web services like Adafruit IO using MQTT. You could interact with uh, REST web services. Anything that you want to do on an internet connection is now possible because the cellular radio is connected. The only issue you'll have is if you run out of coverage. So I hope that gives you a quick introduction to the GPI. The same sort of functionality is available on the FiPi. These two devices from PyCom both have the cellular radio. I'm looking forward to building some projects with this. I'd like to have a uh, low jacking bug for my new bike so that if it ever wanders off, it'll tell me where it's gone. I'm hoping I can hide all the equipment in the frame somewhere and nobody will even know it's there. Alrighty, as usual, the documentation is linked below. There's more detail there than I can pack into the video. I hope you have some success with your cellular IoT, I nearly said something else, IoT projects. Thanks, see ya.